Hi everyone, Scrappy Kathy here. This is a um, a month end review for all of the layouts that I've done without spending any money on new supplies for Freeze Friday, which is the year-long spending freeze that I'm involved in, and for the Rediscover Your Stash June spending freeze, during which I made up a special kit for how to kill a kit with style, a, a mix of all the Vicki Booten supplies that I own, and I set a goal to try to do average two layouts a day, um, and I ended up uh, I think 48, I, I have to go check, maybe 46. Um, nowhere near 60 anyway. Um, had some illness and hospitalization that kind of interrupted <laughs> things in there. And then we took a little uh, vacation trip. I took some supplies with me and made a couple layouts, but we, um, we did a lot of walking and, and uh, uh, hanging out <laughs> at the resort where we went and just didn't get as much scrapping done. So I'm gonna quickly run through these layouts um, and I'll tell you who I did them for and kind of what supplies were used. This is a mix of Vicki Booten. I think mostly the papers are mostly from um, Let's Wander, except for the background, which is from a very early collection, and this pink, which may be, uh, gosh, I don't know. I forget which, which collection, but three different edits of the same photo of our irises kind of set against the, the newly leafed out um, Japanese maple and, and some of the other uh, things in the garden in the early spring. This was for um, a, a sketch in Rediscover Your Stash, and I, of course, it was with my Vicki Booten How to Kill a Kit with Style Kit. This one used the color scheme for the, um, it, it again repeated the navy and, and yellow color scheme for, um, let me, uh, and, uh, and, and it, that's not the main challenge that it was, but it was for uh, Craft Plus, and I did have craft elements in here. There's craft here and craft here, and this was kind of craft looking before I put some iridescent glaze on it, and I wanted to do kind of an artsy, uneven glaze, and what I got was kind of a messy, uneven glaze on, on this. It's laser-cut chipboard that's very thin, kind of um, looks a little like a cut file, and I thought about backing it as a cut file, but it kind of subbed in for this set of circles that were overlaid in this particular sketch. So that's enough about that one. There's no video on, I don't think there's a video on either of these pages. Uh, no video there, uh, no video there. So this one is another one. I, I used the back side of, and it truly is a back side, of this um, paper from Mombly that is sadly gone away. It's unique paper and the backside was just very interesting to me with the kind of, you can't really, it's kind of an abstract of that doily and it, I just love the color. And this is a grid that I, uh, that I did just, it was a scrap dive, and the, the, the theme was punches. So I punched butterflies and circles and squares and more butterflies in another circle. And then I just used a ton of ephemera and stickers um, 
from my How to Kill a Kit with Style kit. This one is one that I spent <laughs> a lot of time on. Um, I absolutely love how this turned out, and I had been wondering how I could use this kind of sunburst paper. I loved it, but it's so pretty, you just don't want to cover it up. So I decided to really highlight the sunburst and the unevenness of the widths uh, there with those sequins. And I tried to color match the sequins to the next layer up. And again, there's no video on this one. All of these supplies down here are Let's Wander. I think maybe a Heidi Swap. Um, tab sneaked in there and this might be a color kaleidoscope butterfly there but um, that was done for a rainbow challenge at rediscover your stash and again with my how to kelly kit with style and no video this is a uh, one of my favorite <laughs> of the photos from Katie's graduation, Katie and Allie's graduation. They're holding their mortarboards here, showing the decorating that they've done. And I, I, back in my day, that wasn't a thing to decorate your mortarboard. But this is the one Katie did, and I put it down on the sidewalk and then stood over it to take the photo, which left this big shadow of me kind of over it. But that's kind of one of the things I like about the photos. Um, a real mix of Vicki Booten here, an older collection, and, and some of these things are from the newest, Let's Wander. And this is, I use the back side of this paper because I didn't think I would use the paper as it was, and I already had one that I had begun cutting out some of these things. So this is the sketch I used. It was sketch number six in the... Um, uh, sketches and rediscover your stash and let's see did I make a video on this one no video okay now here's one that I stretched a single page layout a single page sketch to a double page because I had so many photos I wanted to use. This was kind of a 12th birthday um, spread for Ava. I used my Mind the Scrap June kit, and I used a square of each of the 12 by 12 pattern papers, and then just lots of the chipboard uh, and, and stickers. And I used the stencil that came with the uh, mixed media kit to do this pattern. And I've got photos from each of her 12 years. So there is a video on that one. I can't say it's the most entertaining video I've ever done. So just a warning. <laughs> this is one that used an overlay. I, I did arrange the papers first and then put the overlays on top of the paper so you get the starburst look on top of all of these patterns. And I've never done anything like that before and I kind of accidentally did it here and I love it. And this is a heavily edited or filtered photo of my son and my husband, um, the dads we were celebrating on Father's Day. This is our back patio and I have some lights hanging around this little, this is kind of a wall hanging uh, wire sculpture right under the porch light. And then I have some string lights that I just was too lazy to string around. So I just kind of looped them around that. And <laughs> the way it came out in the filter is just amazing. I, I love it. Um, and this is, uh, there's no filter. It's a boys page. Um, the challenge was to do a boys page and I challenged myself to do a boys page with Vicki Booten, uh, collection. So I use all my most masculine colors there. Uh, this one is one I had fun with. It was a stamping challenge and I took a pre-made mixed media background and 
stamped and overstamped two different leaf patterns from two different stamp sets from Vicki Booten. And I stamped these here and here, and then I stamped them on white paper and fussy cut them and overlaid them so that they would overlap my photos. And these are photos of four plants that kind of have a story in my garden. Um, this one is one, I had the kids go out and name my flowers one day, and this was one that they all agreed was to be called Georgia Peach. And this is the closest to a purple daylily that I've ever raised. And it's actually in person a little more purple than it looks here. But this one came with me from Houston. This is a, a gladiolus that literally looks like it's on fire when it blooms. And it's just amazing. And it's also uh, made a couple transplants from Houston. This is a black and blue salvia that was planted outside of Barrett's little clubhouse uh, kind of shed uh, at our ha last house in, in Jackson, Georgia. And I, trans I, I just dug up a bit of it and stuck it in the front garden when we moved here in 2011, and it has never bloomed. So this is it's it's finally shown itself. I, I, I The leaves without the blooms kind of look like weeds, and I think that's actually what it is. But So I've come close to just cutting it down to the ground, and uh, it, it came up, and now it's, it's, it's out there and up there, and it's just amazing. So uh, let's see. I don't think there's a video on this one. There is not. Um, this one... is kind of one of those introspective ones. This one does have a video. It's an opposites challenge where to use, you know, black and whites, you know, like opposites on the color spectrum. And then it's also a, an off the board lift of this particular Pinterest pin that I've had uh, in on my board for a while. And it's, number 40, uh, layout number 40 of the 60 I had planned. And when I made this, and and, and it was layout for, well, this has kind of come off its, its little um, platform here. Okay, let me do this. This will hold it. And that happens, as you know, on nearly all of my um, when I do a layout share, I find some um, some bits tend to come off. <laughs> so that one's there. This is a monochromatic uh, page that was done for a spoonful of scraps recipe, a black and white and one other color, three ephemera areas and half the background paper left empty. And I did it for challenge accepted where we were using this formula where it gives you sizes of papers to cut and then you just arrange the papers any way you want. So one of the papers was this size and there was another one that was, it's hard to, was this size right here and so I just tore spots for them to peek through because I didn't really want to use them on this area and the other was this paper and then there's this paper so I pulled everything from my kit that might go with blue I covered up a red part here with black marker and then used some glossy accents to make the lens stand out and I actually filtered a photo so that it came out in blue and white uh, there was a lot of blue and white in it already, but that emphasized it. So I think there is a video on that one. This one is a crazy one. It's uh, it, There's a grid under there, and it's a grid of uh, squares that I arranged in a diamond pattern. And I think they're all different. I don't think I repeated any patterns. All done from scraps. 
It was a scrap dive challenge uh, uh, from Christina Sorge. And it also used a spoonful of scraps recipe that called for nine photos and pattern paper and to journal my thoughts. So I, you can see journaling here, 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 there, journaling is all over. And I actually fussy cut some of my photos. And this was the birthday celebration. Uh, kind of went on all day, kind of right here at home. Um, and the, the kids took the dog out for a walk and, and met the, the next door neighbor's dog. And the kids did a little, Katie and, and uh, Ava did a little skateboarding. Ava's here going through the card that I'd made for her. So it was just a fun day and I wanted to make a really fun page. And Ava said instead of a cake, she wanted um, macaron. So we got her, James got her a macaron tower. So there's no video on this one. A um, couple different challenges. This one is probably one of my favorite layouts ever. I did quite a lot of mixed media underneath it um, that you can see in the video, but um, then I covered it up just because of the where it all based, was based on where I put this horizontal element and then the way that I wanted to arrange things. I did this stamping on pre-made mixed media, the six by eight pad for Let's Wander. And I had filters uh, on the, the photos and that kind of dictated which patterns I picked and this one was kind of yellows and so I did yellows and a yellow green and an, a yellow orange here. This one was had lots of blues and aquas so I did aqu blue or aqua um, leaves and then just uh, kind of the terracotta colors that are down here in the flagstone and the pots. And then this one had lots of, of pinks in it. The terracotta looks or the, the flagstone looks really pink here, and the terracotta pots look pink, so that's, uh, that's kind of how that composition came about. And I used a stencil that you can barely see. There's a little bit of a butterfly visible there. I used a popsicle stick to drag the rose gold glaze there, and I used the um, a pouncer, a foam pouncer, which completely changed the texture of the um, turquoise glaze. So anyway, this one is is fun. There is a video. It's um, uh, tic-tac-toe, blue stencil and hearts. And this was this was done for mixed media Friday, a uh, mixed media frenzy, which does come out on Friday. And this was the uh, the pin that I lifted. This one doesn't use Vicky Booten supplies at all. This is a collection called uh, Quarantine Life, I think, by Photoplay. And um, I've just lost a, an element on here. I'll have to look and see where that, uh, that went. Um, I, the, I took a humorous photograph of uh, the fence as we were approaching the stage where the graduates went up and received their diplomas. Um, and it said class of 2020 and the zeros are toilet paper. So um, the lift I was doing, it was floral. There is a video on this one. It's um, for Scrap Squad Sunday. And I just used pr kind of pre-cut scraps that kind of fit the background that was going on here. The green pieces are a little extra. I actually stamped that after the fact, after it was already on the page and uh, mounted on foam. There's my six rolls of toilet paper here, a mask and the coronavirus itself and the fact that all the schooling was done on, on laptops. This is one I did on vacation. And like I said, I have actually lost something here, let me see if I can um, pick something else that would go there from the stuff I have left. 
let's do that. So it's a little bit of a, a design thing here. I like this nice yellow star and it's from a fairly old sticker sheet. So it needs that liquid glue to hold. So there, I have no idea what was there before, but that's what's there now. So you've seen it. This one, there's no video. The, um, I don't have the uh, thing that I was lifting. The Scrap Squad lift had some striped paper here. So I had all these um, branding strip scraps. So I tore the ends of all of them and I used this piece of paper, which is actually a lot wider up here than it is down here, but I kind of covered it up so that doesn't show. Um, and I made my own stripes. And then just mix of scraps, including this was a, a tryout of some texture paste through a stencil. This is a piece of, of acetate overlay. I think that's from Chamel's Field Trip. Um, and lots of, uh, the rest of it's pretty much all Vicki Booten. So I'll put that aside. This one also doesn't have a video. This is for a sunburst um, challenge from Christina Sorge at the Secret Not Secret Party, or um, oh, I, um, Rediscover Your Stash. It was a, a, a um, another one of the uh, scrap dive layouts. And I've used another acrylic overlay. I, I cut it so that it would just go over the black part. And this was for a humorous challenge, a silly is a silly does challenge from Mara O'Reilly at the Secret Not Secret party. And it says positive mind, positive vibes, positive life, negative test. So this was the day I, I went into the hospital after three days of, of COVID symptoms and they needed to check me out to make sure I wasn't having heart or lung issues. Um, after the x-ray showing I had no uh, thick crud in my lungs, um, even though I was still running a fever, they sent me home, suggested I get a COVID test. I did the next day and I waited four days and it came out negative. Got that on Father's Day, so I was able to get together with the family on Father's Day. Otherwise, I was quarantined. So, let's just says, take a deep breath, which was a little hard to do at the time. You know, just kind of a... Uh, I never thought I'd scrap this picture. <laughs> and and uh, I think, um, I think it was, I got a dare. She may not have meant it as a dare, but she told me I needed to scrap it. It was my, my partner in crime, Shannon. And um, she said, you need to scrap that. And I said, no, never. And so I need to tag her when I put that out there anywhere. This is one I did this morning. It's for a florals challenge at the Secret Not Secret um, Kit Club party. It's also for the birthday recipe for Chef Emma at, um, uh, at Spoonful of Scraps to use stitching, floral element, or the, and the color pink. So there's pink around here. There are certainly florals around here. And because I don't do stitching, uh, I with if I do, there's little pin pricks, needle pricks, and blood spots all over the place. And blood is not a good mixed media look. Um, I'll, I'll tell you from experience. Um, so I, I have some fake stitching that I actually use to kind of frame this um, kind of evening sky. It's not exactly sunset uh, at Margaritaville taken a couple days ago. And I, this is all from Let's Wander, the two pages of paper um, I used for the background are from Field Notes. So that's my last one for the month. I may do a couple more this evening in order to uh, you know, to make 
films, make videos that are due the next couple or three days, but I'll count those in the July since they won't be published until July. And just to show you, I do have quite a pile of ephemera left. And I have, let's see what I have in the way of papers left. I have quite a few of the mixed media, uh, pre-made mixed media tablet for Let's Wander. I have a couple copies of this map. This is not my favorite map paper, and I'm not sure how I'll use it. This is a pay paper that I have used. This one, I'll probably use the white side. So those are from older collections. This is my last pre-made mixed media from Color Kaleidoscope. That's just a plain white sheet of paper. I have this one from Field Notes, and I love this side of it. I have used this side, but when I use this one, I'm probably going to use this side of it, and I have no idea what or when, but I may actually try to work this into it or onto it. I may fussy cut those flowers and do those there, and I may then die cut some things from this mixed media bit and, and kind of put that around it. So I'd like to combine those, but I didn't get to it this month. There's some more of this feather overlay that I used on the previous one, and this is the gold side. There is a silver side. I'll probably use the silver side next time since I used the gold side before. I have a couple craft sheets that I kind of just threw in there. This is a Let's Wander paper that has, again, not my favorite map design on the other side, so I'll probably cut those up and use those around. This one, I've die cut a couple things. I have, I had several sheets of this and I fussy cut the butterflies. I will probably fussy cut all those butterflies and use those. This is an, another paper that I absolutely love. I will fussy cut those flowers and use those maybe on one or two different layouts. I love this paper and I think I'm going to try. I also love the feather side of it. I may gut this and then overlay something so that only this much shows or, or maybe I'll probably put a, a, a white sheet, like something like that, and then maybe put some embellishments there. So I will use that, and I'm gonna use as a whole sheet. I have fussy cut too many of those flowers. <laughs> I guess I could have, that's from the same collection as this. I could have fussy cut some of these and overlaid them here. That would have been a, a nice, that would have been an interesting look. And I do have the sheet that I fussy cut these out of, and I used it to kind of practice some of my watercolor colors. The, I was blending crayons to try to come up with those colors, and then I, I went and tried to use these, and then I tried to use some of these um, Ken Oliver's liquid metal uh, colors and, you know, blend them about. I ended up liking the crayons, the Vicky Booten crayons the best. Okay, so, and I have a miscellaneous six by eight pads. So I still have a lot to create with, but I'm gonna put it all in my Vicky Booten drawer and come up with a different How to Kill a Kit with Style kit. So, thank you for watching. I appreciate all your support this month <laughs> um, as I tried my crazy goal and didn't meet it. And uh, I'll see you coming up. I'll, I'll be um, sharing, doing a kit reveal for my July kit, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day. So, thank you again for watching and go out and collect sunsets. 
Bye.